Hey guys, you ever wonder what true love is? Well, true love is when your wife goes and gets yourself some of your favorite Vienna sausages that you just love to put on that pellet smoker. So good, it just makes your mouth water, especially when they're pre-cooked. Isn't that right, man? Yeah. That's true love. Are right you ready there. for them? Yeah, let's go. So guys, welcome back to Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. My name is Todd. Obviously, you met Sassy right there. She's heading back there to the pantry to get those sausages. They're so fresh, they're in a can. You don't need to refrigerate those at all. There they are. Whoa, baby, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it's prime brisket. <laughs> this is love. All right, baby. Oh, I love you, baby. All right, guys. Psych. Hey, what we got here is a... Costco Prime, USDA Prime, uh, 20 pound brisket, guys. So, uh, you know, <laughs> in our parts, you know, it's kind of hard to get some really good stuff uh, off the shelf in Costco sometimes is basically what we gotta do. There's a lot of videos out there with uh, Costco briskets and uh, you know, sometimes it's all about how you cook it and we're gonna cook it up. Rest assured, I am gonna be taking a lot of, of this uh, meat and fat off of here. Um, to trim it down, get it aerodynamic, reduce it from 20 pounds to hopefully around 12 or 13. Uh, and um, Sunshine says hi. This was asked for by several subscribers uh, after we made the uh, smoke collector mod on the Yoder uh, loaded Wichita. And some people asked for brisket. And so this is the perfect opportunity to test that smoke collector on a brisket. On a pretty hefty sized brisket too, guys. Uh, if you didn't know, most barbecue joints, you know, they, they usually go for about a 14 pounder thereabouts. 20 pounder is probably excessive, but you know, we're gonna trim it up really good. I'm gonna make sure that it's aerodynamic, it's rounded, uh, you know, the decals cut down and uh, all that unnecessary uh, oxidate, oxidized uh, fat is trimmed away, guys. Um, so. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get started with the trim. All right, guys. Uh, here we go. This this looks pretty good right now for what I want to do. Look, <laughs> hopefully the camera's picking that up, but I don't know, babe. How much weight do you think that is right there? Eight pounds? Yes. Five or eight pounds. So it went from a twenty-pound well, brisket easily down to at least seven. A, at least a thirteen-pound brisket now, guys. Uh, I'm just going to use my left hand at this point. You know, th this part of the flat super thick, but over here on this side. I had kind of a challenge, but it's still a nice thick flat, you know. The part that I cut away was definitely thin. Um, I did my best to kind of save some of this area of the point back here. You know, I left this big old vein of fat here. You know, that's okay. I'm going to render that down. This fat cap, really thin going through here, so I didn't want to touch it, but it was somewhat thick here. You know, I know there's some ridges here, but I thought I did that all, all right. Uh, and then on this side... Um, again, I didn't molest it too much on this side, just some of the silver skin off, not all of it. Uh, and, and of course, on the side of the burnt ends, might not be perfectly um, round, but anyway. A plain old yellow mustard schmear. And trust me, guys, you are not going to taste any mustard if you do this. Uh, okay, it's really a preference. I'm not sure that it's ever been. Um, scientifically proven to make a difference. All right, so I've shaken up this Grillaholics SPG really well. As you can see, it's got a lot of nice California grown near the coast garlic powder. And it smells so good and it's fresh, guys. This is coastal garlic powder. And we're gonna go with these crushed red peppers and guys, we love a nice little bite, don't we, babe? Yep. 
I'm going to wrap this up in saran wrap really tight. I'm going to be putting it back in the fridge and you're not going to see me for about eight hours. Let me show you what I got going with the yoder. I'm looking at about 275 more or less. Um, I got a good fire um, with a little bit of mixed uh, uh, hickory, mesquite, mostly hickory. Throw in a little bit of mesquite here and there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on. It's uh, it's uh, 5 a.m. And uh, one quick note about the smoke collector mod. Um, it's a pretty cool morning, probably about 45 degrees, clear skies, no wind. Um, pretty easy to start up a uh, cold pit here with this collector. I got really good airflow. Um, and once everything got heated up, uh, it's doing, doing really well. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm going fat cap down with the point uh, pointed toward the fire there. I've got my deflector plate with the water pan um, on there. Um, seems to be doing pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close it down now. Keep that heat in. All right, guys, here we go, 5 a.m. You know, I wanted to get it on closer to 4, but that's okay. It's a big piece of meat, and, uh, you know, I know it's going to take its time to cook. So I'm going to do a couple things a little bit differently this time. I usually go fat cap side up. So this time I'm going to go fat cap down. Plus what I'm going to do when it's time, when the bark sets up, I'm going to spritz with Campbell's beef broth cut with a little bit of water. I'm going to do that, uh, you know, whenever it needs it, once that bark sets up. Also, all the trimmings that I used uh, from last night, I'm going to be throwing those on the coals directly from time to time gonna give it a nice sizzle grilled flavor I hope I've seen some barbecue channels that have tried that I think Chud's is one maybe Franklin there's others guys sorry that I, I can't get everyone a shout out but it's early you know but that's what I'm gonna be doing so those are the two big things I'm also gonna instead of completely wrapping it in paper I'm gonna use a boat method just to keep that bark formation going on the top there uh, and then once that bark is really set up the way I like it uh, I'm probably going to maybe wrap it up completely and finish it off in the oven. haven't decided yet. I'm just going to see how my fuel situation is going and uh, how long this actually takes. So wish me luck, guys. It's been on for four hours, uh, 250 degrees Fahrenheit more or less, and I think it's doing really well. In fact, uh, it's time to spritz with uh, some of my 50-50 water beef broth, Campbell's beef broth. Uh, there we go okay now this is 200 because i just had the lid open but it's gonna creep back up there to 250 275 right around there uh, i'm gonna end up uh, putting this in a foil boat uh, to finish it off so far uh, i really like the collector it seems to be working really well i got a much more even heat on the brisket uh, than past briskets i think it's doing all right guys comment what you guys think about this collector uh, i'll put a link in the upper right hand corner there for the video of us fabricating it otherwise let's uh, get on with the rest of the cook all right guys it's 11:30. it's been uh six and a half hours since we put this brisket on and uh you know for the most part um i've been just spritzing it with uh beef broth and uh water mix and that's about it i haven't even moved it or rotated it at all i've been throwing the fat trimmings onto the fire once in a while giving it a little extra beef taste but you know I also rendered down some beef tallow and uh, if you guys want to know how you do that guys I've you seen me do that before in a video I'll try to leave a link up here to do it but I'm just gonna give it a little bath with this little basting brush uh, just a little bit just to kind of switch it up a little bit because uh, I'm getting close to where I'm gonna be boating it um, it's probably right around 155 160 internal it's going to hit the stall here soon, but I'm, I think I'm going to let it go at about 170. Make sure it gets past that that uh, stall everyone talks about and I've experienced, obviously. Uh, when I boat it, I'll probably do it again. Hey, baby. <laughs> oh, you didn't go down with me? <laughs> okay. Hey, guys. Uh, hey, so we're uh, cooking a brisket. Obviously, you, you know all about that brisket. Uh, 
what you don't know maybe yet is that uh, eh, you know it's not going quite as planned so stick around to the end of the video but uh, what we're here to do is draw names from the folks that watched our last wingnut wednesday we're Turn giving it. away two well let me say super clean is Turn giving away two of their fine products one is their original super clean a bottle of original super clean and then a can of super clean aerosol and uh, we are going to draw one lucky name again the rules were pretty simple subscribe like and comment at, oh. on our wingnut wednesday <laughs> uh, video so uh let's go drum roll please okay my help my hopefully and here they are in all fairness all six. <sighs> Why would it be unfair? <laughs> All six of them. <laughs> All right, ready? God, you take a long time. I know. My assistant, I'm my trying, assistant's a little slow today. I'm Sorry. I'm trying to mix them up good. Oh. <laughs> wait. <laughs> okay, wait. We, so no. our hands are wet. Maybe are you uh, shrinking them or something? No, I'm just. The water's warm, so I'm definitely not shrinking. Okay. Okay, I think. Oh, it got <laughs> stuck to my hand. Hold on, sorry. Oh my God. Okay. okay. Anyway, as you guys know, well. Okay. Oh, there we go. Here, hold this, and I'll read the winner. And why do you make those tickets so small? Oh, cause. Uh, oh. What we got here? Daddy. Daddy, Daddy Dutch. Daddy Dutch barbecue. Right on, <laughs> Kent. Cheers. Congratulations. Uh, you are going to get a uh, original super clean uh, pump spray uh, and a aerosol can of their super clean these. degreaser. It's good stuff, uh, Kent. Mm. Really, really is. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I don't know where my assistant went, but guys, uh, I'm going to get back to swimming and uh, figure I got about 25 minutes in between uh, putting oh. logs on the, on the fire there, so I'm going to get my laps in. So... Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let's get on with the show. I'm just gonna... Sorry. <laughs> so I'm just going to drip some of this tallow on here, just like that. It's not going to take much. Get all the help it can get, right? Now, it definitely doesn't feel super squishy, you know? I don't know, jiggly. Kind of see it's kind of got a jiggle, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to pick it up. But, uh... It's definitely getting close to where I'm going to boat it. Now I've uh, protected this uh, end toward the fire here where the burnt ends are going to be with this foil. That seems to be doing a good job keeping it from getting too burned. Um, Alright guys, that's, that's about it. Okay, good morning guys. As you can probably tell, it is the next day. So let's review what we did here with this brisket. We basically left off where I was throwing some of that beef trimmings, some, mainly the uh, fat, directly onto the coals to kind of achieve more of a beefy taste and flavor on the meat. I've seen this done uh, numerous places around the interweb, and I think it's a really good idea, and uh, why not give it a try? So I ended up using the boat method on the foil wrap, fat side down, because honestly, I've never really noticed much of a difference, whether it's fat side up, or fat side down. And so that's the approach that I took. And the bark, let me just say, it started to look like a meteorite, and that's what you're going for. You want that to look dark and even. Now with the exception of a few little areas toward the point um, because of the fat, it was pretty much consistent all the way across, guys. It looked great. I wasn't getting the temperature that I wanted in the flat, so I ended up turning the brisket with the flat toward the fire uh, to kind of help that out, and it seemed to do that pretty well. But unfortunately, the consistency, the feel, the temperature, and everything else considered fat rendering wasn't there until it was a little too late in the evening. And so what I ended up doing is taking it out of the foil boat and wrapping it in 24 inch pink butcher paper and then I put it in a towel in a cooler and let it rest up overnight. Now 
it really only rested maybe 11, maybe 10 hours, 12 at the most, so 10, 12 hours, I can't remember. And that's okay. There are a lot of people that believe lengthily, lengthily, long rest periods are really what you need to also try to achieve. Minimum two hours, but uh, I'm telling you, you know, it's long rest times is something maybe uh, a nut that we got to crack. So I came out this morning and took my Thermo Pro, checked the temperature, and it fell below that 140 mark, which is safe. So what I have is my oven chugging away here at 225 to bring that temperature back up above 140 so that it's safe. And uh, then we're gonna go ahead, unwrap it, and slice it down the middle and show you guys what we have. Right off the bat, you guys could see these fissures here. Um, looks like, uh, looks like might have cooked it a little too long. I'm not sure, I know, the fat, again, the fat caps underneath uh, definitely rendered down, uh, and it rendered rendered down nicely. Uh, and uh, again, I can't explain these fissures. Um, maybe if you guys got an idea, uh, leave a comment down below. But otherwise, I love the way this looks. Uh, looks like a moon rock, basically a meteorite, and that's the look that I'm going for here. Smell is wonderful. So what I'm going to do here, of course, we have the point right here. We have the flat over here. I trimmed this to take advantage of uh, a, a fairly decent uh, flat. It was pretty thick and, um, and the point, again, right over here. So I'm gonna go right down the middle and I'm just gonna show you the inside. All right. I'm almost afraid to pick it up because it's just it's wanting to fall apart. Okay, now I'm just going to put the flat over to the side. I'm going to turn this about 90 degrees. I'm going to go down the middle. Yeah, it's just falling apart. Hmm. Well, guys, you win some, you lose some. Um, this one, mm. the taste is there. Crust isn't bad. Let me try to get this to cut. Not bad. Okay, not bad, not bad. So, hmm. <coughs> Okay, let's see the flat well, it's here. It's juicy as all get out. So you can kind of see the grain obviously running like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a slice right here. Definitely got the smoke ring. Hmm, yeah. I guess just got cooked uh, cooked too long. The flat was really tough up until the end, and then um, then I uh, rested it. Maybe I rested it too long. Well, you know, brisket is a learning process. I tried a few new things uh, during this cook that maybe I shouldn't have. Mmm, I tell you, the taste is right there though. That was good. I tell you, the flavor is right there. I love this flavor in the point. Mm. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below and let us know what you believe happened here. Uh, obviously, I suspect probably too long of a, a rest. But it actually came out of the boat falling apart. So maybe it just cooked too fast uh, with that increased airflow. Maybe that happened. Um, and uh, be sure to subscribe. So otherwise, guys... Um, Congratulations to the weekly Wingnut Wednesday giveaway uh, winners. Um, that's fantastic. Remember, every Wednesday we're going to be giving away something and uh, on the Wingnut Wednesday, so be sure to check those videos out and follow those rules, and you hopefully win a cool prize. So anyway, guys, that's it for this week, and we'll see you on the next one. Okay. Oh, wait. I'm going to go like this.
Oh, you didn't go down with me? Okay. <laughs>